Hi y'all, this is So So Bless. Welcome to the Blessed Place. How y'all doing? This is a video that's long overdue for one of my blessed ones. And she said that I could use her name. So her name is Adela West, or at least that's what her YouTube name is. So I don't know if that's your real name, but Adela, thank you for being a blessed one. And thank you for this video request. And I apologize that it's a couple of weeks delayed. Uh, like, like I you know, expressed to you in email, just been busy, 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 as I said in my last video. So Adela's father recently passed away, and I don't know how recent, but she's still in extreme, she's having extreme grief. She's in a, the, the grieving stage. And she knows that I mentioned that my father passed away October and even as each month passes, I can't believe it's been that long. So October 22nd, I'll go November, December, January 22nd was three months. So I can't even believe because I just feel like it was yesterday. And I'm going to try to do this video, Adela, without crying. Oh my God, I feel, you know, you feel the tears. I feel myself welling up, so I'm gonna to try to do this without crying. Uh, first, Adela, um, anybody else who, this, this video is for Adela, but I pray that it's able to bless anybody else who's had loss in their family or, um, or a loved one, um, you've had loss of a loved one, or any future loss, God forbid, any future loss of a loved one. But um, Adela, and the rest of my blessed ones, I am by no means an expert in this field. None. Zero. But because you asked me to do this, I'm going to give you the best of what I have and what I've learned. And the reason I say I'm by no means any expert because this is the first time, except for my paternal grandmother died when I was about 12, and my maternal grandfather died when I was in my 20s but other than that this is the closest loss I've ever had to me and um, I just want to say first of all I know your pain I know your pain I might not know your exact pain because our level of grief is is different each of us our level of grief grief is different and how we deal with that grief is different. And so what I'm going to share with you is just generic information because your level of grief or this, the path you may have to take to, to healing may be totally different from my path to healing and I am still on that path. If that path is a mile long, Believe me, I've only gone just a few steps. You know how you walk a few steps and you look back and you think you've gone far and you look and say, dang, I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> and so I'm sure that's where I am with my grief. I'm just a few steps away and I still have a long way to go. So what first of all I want to share is that don't let anybody tell you how to grieve. Because they might seem kind of ironic with me doing this video telling you how to grieve. <laughs> but that's not my intention, is to tell you how to grieve. It's just to share some information with you. But we often like to put our expectations on people, either your family or friends or coworkers or society in general will wanna tell you how you should grieve. You should not be crying, you should still be crying. You should not be laughing Oh, get over it you should be laughing um, I don't know if you're a Christian but especially our Christian friends and family uh, our church members like to quote lots of Bible verses to be absent um, in the bodies to be present with the Lord um, don't grieve as the world grieve um, all kinds of, of um, all kinds of Bible verses as it relates to death and grief, Christians like to use. 
And believe me, there's nothing more true than the word. So they are not wrong with the word. It's just that when we are in our numbness of grief or when we're in that shock of grief or when we're in that place of grief, those Bible verses are of little comfort at that time. Eventually, yes. Eventually the word can be comforting, but depending on what stage of grief you're in, sometimes those Bible verses are of little comfort. I know that, number one, my daddy would not have wanted to be relegated to the bed. And I know that to be absent from that body racked with pain is to be present with the Lord. I know he's in a better place. Yet that does not make any difference to me that if I had, if I could, if God was to say, do you want your dad back? I would not say, no, that's okay, God. Keep him up there. He's in a better place. I would be like, yes, and I need him back before Super Bowl Sunday because we watch every Super Bowl together for the last 20-something years. Yes, I need him back pronto before Sunday. <laughs> so if I was asked that, I would be like, forget the Bible verses. This is what I want. So, um, you know, people will say things to you that that's very well-intentioned. I would also say don't get mad at them. Don't try your best not to get mad at those people who try to say who say things to you that they're very well intentioned, but they're not helpful, or sometimes they're uh, not the timing. Sometimes timing is everything, and sometimes their timing is off. You know, people can just hold your hand. They can just sit in with you. They can just cry with you. They can hug hug you. They don't have to, you know, say all of those things that they think is comforting, but not. But if they do, if somebody does, just know that their heart is with you and to comfort you. I would also say, I don't know what kind of memories you have with your dad, but I would imagine there had to be some good memories if you're in this grieving stage, because I feel like otherwise you wouldn't be in this place of extreme grief if you were not, um, if you didn't have good memories. I would say, think on those good memories. Like I say, Super Bowl is coming up. I would say probably the last 20 years of Super Bowls we've spent with my dad at my dad's house um, watching the Super Bowl. I might even upload one of the videos, put a link when um, his team didn't win, put it that way. And we were making fun of him. <laughs> and it was one of the first times that I saw my dad really mad at us because we were joking about his team losing. We were like, who that? Who that? <laughs> and he was pissed. But that is such an awesome memory that I have of my dad. So I just shared that to say to you, if you have great memories, think on those things. Is that, you know, there's one of the Bible verses that say, um, those things which are lovely, those things which are good, those things which are kind. Think on those things. Think on those memories that you have with your dad and cherish those mem memories and meditate on those memories and laugh at those memories or cry about those memories. But those uh, memories were made for a time such as this. That's just my opinion that all of those things that you have done with your dad, the conversations you had with your dad, the places you've gone with your dad, they were all not, they were, they were not for naught. If that makes sense, if you know what I'm saying. It was not for naught. It was not for nothing. It was for a time such as this for you to reflect and meditate and back on and have those good feelings. Um, also, when it comes to your dad, thinking about your dad, also um, think about what your dad would have wanted for you. I don't know about your dad, but I know my dad would not have wanted me to go the rest of my life grieving him. Uh, my dad would have been like, uh, like I said, I know, I'm sure our dads were very different in their characters and their personality. And you have to fit this according to what your dad's personality was. But my dad would have been like, oh, Didi, don't cry. Don't be sad. Don't be sad the rest of your life. I'm okay. Dad is okay. But I think my dad would have been so hurt that we're hurt. So I also try to remember that, that my dad would not have wanted me to be depressed, to be in a constant state of grief, um, to, uh, to um, 
remember him in that way. My dad would have wanted us to laugh about the things that he did and this and his this his boisterous personality and his um his gregarious attitude and this big smile and the fact that he loved people and people loved him and that's what he would want us to remember about him. And I don't know about your dad, but I would think like I say if you you know, he had to be a pretty good dad to you if you were grieving him in such a manner that your dad would not want you to, he would not want to be the cause of your deep, deep, deep hurt and pain. And I know myself as a mom and a mom of an only daughter, if I, when I, when I pass away and I pray to God, I pass away before my daughter, that should be the natural progression of things. But when I pass away, I know my daughter's going to grieve. We're very, very close. But I don't want to be the cause of lifelong, constant grief in her life. You know what I mean? I want her to have your little, you know, few weeks, few months, whatever it takes of grief. And then just remember the good times. Remember, uh, laugh about, you know, the things we did and what I said. And, um, and I don't want to be the cause of her grief. And I say that to say that I know my dad doesn't want to be the cause of me having a deep depression or grief. And I don't know your dad, but I can I feel comfortable and confident enough to say that I'm sure your dad would not want to be the source and the cause of deep depression or grief in your life. But I would think you would rather want to be the source of great memories, the great the source of great joy in your life. Also, Adela. If you need help, sometimes we're going through such a deep, deep, dark place when it comes to loss that sometimes we need help. We get Sometimes we might need help from um, our church pastor or assistant pastor if your church has a counsel, counselors or, um, and, th and you have to make sure that they are, that they are, um, what do I want to say? That they can minister to your problem. Because just because someone is a pastor doesn't mean that they can always minister to your specific problem when it comes to grief or that they can address that particular issue. So you want to make sure that if it is someone in your church that they can specifically address that type of issue when it comes to grief. Or, or if you have some type of um, the therapy or something you can get in through your, your health insurance uh, but some kind of way see if you can find some help if it gets to that point where you think that's where you need it me in particular um, unless I'm in some type of denial which I don't think I am I, I don't need therapy uh, you know maybe I have three sisters and we get together and we talk and we cry and we laugh and that's my therapy. You know, I have my husband uh, who's lost. And that's been a great help, too, because my husband lost his parents years ago. I think his mom maybe 10 years ago and his father maybe 14 years ago. So that's a great source of support. So you have to get support. You have to get support either. And it seemed like to me you said in your email that I didn't quite understand if you had the support or you didn't. It seemed to me that you didn't have the support in your household that you wouldn't would want or would need. So if you don't have the support in your household, look for support outside of your household, through your church, uh, through your job, uh, through your friends, associates, um, online. I'm sure there are type there are, there's all kinds of groups. You know, just like there is AA. Um, just like there's Overeaters Anonymous, you know, I'm sure there are, there are groups specifically for grief. And you can always find that online. Um, so having a great support system, I believe, is key. And which is probably why, which I'm sure, you know, God and having a great support system is why I don't need therapy. Adela, whatever you do, don't go through this alone. Don't hold it all in. Whatever it is that you're feeling, don't hold all your feelings in because one day it's going to come out. One day your grief is going to manifest itself in a way that you don't understand what's going on. And you might have to think back. It could be months later, years later, and you might have to trace the manifestation of that grief 
you may have to trace that back to the loss of your father. You may be in a marriage and wondering why are you acting like this or that? Why are you treating your husband like this or that? Um, you could just have a breakdown, mental breakdown one day and want to know why, why are you crying all the time? Why are you in such a dark place? And it may be because you have stuffed down those those feelings. You have not dealt with grief. You have not gone through the grieving process. Um, there And there is a process. You know, And I can't remember all the, you know, you can always look it up online, but there's something like anger and denial and... Um, I don't know, there are about five stages. I know there are five stages. Uh, I think it's Kubler-Ross. can't remember the lady's first name, but her last name is Kubler-Ross. And she kind of coined these five stages of, of uh, grief. And you can always look that up. K-U-B-L-E-R-Ross, R-O-S-S, Kubler-Ross. And you could, you know, look that up because of the different stages of grief. And, and it talks about how, what's going on with you in these different stages. And if you don't deal with the grief now, it will manifest itself later some kind of way. Eating disorder, um, anger issues, um, depression, etc. So you want to be able to deal with this now, which I know that's what you're doing because that's why you asked me about doing a video. But lastly, I want to say that I appreciate you asking me about this to do this video. I appreciate your trust in my advice, but I also want to say this, that just watching this video, if it's not enough for you, make sure you get help. You don't want to just depend on this video. If this video blesses you, helps to heal you, that is awesome. But if you haven't been able to deal with your grief, get healing 